Thank you so much, Scott. We appreciate your talents and we appreciate the opportunity to just be centered in this beautiful song of the Lord's Prayer. There's a story that is written by a man and he shares this interesting experience. He writes, several days ago, I left a meeting at a hotel and I was desperately looking for my keys. I did the TSA pat down and I'm looking all over. Where are these keys? They're not in my pocket. And after a quick search of the meeting room, he revealed nothing. There was no keys to be found. Suddenly he realized, you know what? I must have left them in my car. And he frantically headed to the parking lot. Well, he remembered his wife has scolded him many times for leaving the keys in the ignition, but his theory was, you know, the, leaving them in the ignition was the best place. You know, you wouldn't lose them. You'd know where to find them. But her theory was, you leave them in the ignition, the car could be stolen. Well, as he burst through the door, he writes, I came to the terrifying conclusion. Her theory was right. The parking lot was empty. My car was gone. So I immediately called the police and I gave them my location and confessed, I'm sorry, but I've left the keys to my key car in the ignition and it may have been stolen. Then I made the most difficult call of all. Honey, I stammered. I always call her honey in times like these. I left my keys in the car and it's been stolen. And there was this period of silence I thought the call had been dropped, but then I heard her voice. Idiot, she barked. I dropped you off. <laughs> now it was my time to be silent and embarrassed. And I said, well, could you come and get me? She reported, I will, as soon as I convince the policeman that I've not stolen your car. <laughs> Isn't it true? In life, we're always looking for keys. Keys to our car, keys to our home, keys to our office, because Keys offer us access. And today we're looking for keys to success. Keys that offer us access to our highest and best. And in the midst of challenge, we're all wondering, how are we gonna make it through this challenging time? And we're looking for those keys. Give me access to my success. In these challenging times, we wonder maybe, did we lose our keys? We search and we don't realize that God, the creator, has brought us to this place called life. And we are not without a vehicle for success in life because the creator, God, dropped us off. And here's the real kicker. God is ready to pick us up at any time, ready at any time, and even in the midst of our challenge, God is ready to come to our needs and unfold the highest and best in us, through us, around us, and for us. So when we understand this completely, and that is to say completely without any reservations, when we understand this is to the point where we say, I get it, I understand, I fully embrace it. Okay, the keys are within. It impacts how we face or respond to all of life's challenges. Life gives us many detours. There's a lot of bumps in the road. There's a lot of challenges that come our way. The big question is, how do we respond when something happens that kind of throws us out of our norm? How do we respond to or, or a challenge? Because this life is a journey and it's happening right now. And what's happening right now is actually most important. And we have to ask you, how are you dealing with the right now? What makes all the difference in this experience is simply how we respond to all of what's going on. For how we respond is based on how much of God we have realized and brought into our own God realization. How much we've embraced, how much we've understood, how much we've taken in, how much we are conscious of, how much we are having a complete awareness of that God is in us, through us, around us, and for us. That changes everything in how we respond to any kind of challenge or detour. God in us, God through us, God around us. This is more than a cliched phrase. This is our realization. This is where we begin our day. This is where we start. God in me, 
God through me, God around me, God for me. And that's how we respond to every single challenge in the journey of our life. That's our great success. That's the key to us becoming the overcomer in any obstacle or detour that comes to our lives. So how we respond when life gives us this challenge is so crucial and so important. Are we responding with fear? Are we responding with doubt? Are we worried? Are we stressed? Are we allowing any of this to come into our lives? Or are we responding with this clear affirmation, this God realization? I realize God is in me. Today, most of us are working from home. I want to tell you this. You're the temple of the Lord, the dwelling place. And yes, God is working from home. Working from home within you, through you, around you. For this is the home of God. The divine place resonates this is you. It resonates within you. And I want to offer you then some practical or keys to responding. Because I love things to be practical in our spiritual journey. And I love them to be positive for our lives. How important it is. So many of us have traveled a spiritual journey, a religious journey of life that hasn't always been so practical or so positive. And so it's painted pictures for us that cloud our God realization. But when we embrace the positive, when we embrace that which is truly practical to be lived out in our day-to-day -day journey, we find our great success. And so let me share with you a few keys that will help you in your journey. First thing that I want to encourage you to do in your journey for finding and discovering great success in challenging times is to know the truth of God, the matter of fact of God, the truth of God. This I know to be true. The truths of life are so great and so powerful. And the real question is, do we know them? Are they embedded within them? So let me encourage you to recite them. That's right. We've offered a 50-day journey of affirmations through a lovely jar of daily affirmations, encouraging you to take one out every single day, recite it. How important it is that as we recite something, what we're doing is we're putting it to memory and we're embracing it in a way that it goes deep within and it's embedded in our subconscious and consequently we will act differently. So when we recite the promises of God, when we go over and over saying them, naming them throughout a day-to-day -day journey, they become more a foundation for our living and a foundation for transformation in our life and a foundation or a rock to build on in times of challenge. I want you to think about reciting those promises. Write them out. Put them on your refrigerator. Place them in place of prominence. But go over each day reciting, this I know to be my truth. This is the truth of God. The power of presence is at work in me. The goodness of God is at work at all times. God is unfolding something amazing in my life. And of course, our mantra for ministry for 2020 is, I'm living the life of expectancy. All these wonderful truths we can express over and over again. Recite them and then reflect on them. Take time out to reflect daily, to think deeply and carefully about these promises. Psalm 119 verses 15 through 16 says, I will meditate on your precepts and regard your ways. I shall delight in your statues. I shall not forget your word. One of our big challenges and why we're not living out our highest and best and why we're not attaining success to the level that we're called to is we have forgotten the very words of God, the very promises of God, the very truth of God. We let it slip away and we welcome more the conversations of today's world of doubt and fear and negativity rather than reflecting every single moment of our day upon the goodness of God. I will meditate on. I will regard your ways, the scripture encourages us. I will delight. I'm going to take joy in these things. And I will not forget them, but I'm holding them dear to my heart because as we've forgotten them, we've let them slip away. And how important it is to reflect on them and hold in mind, contemplate them. To reflect on these great promises is to practice believing them. 
That's right. To practice believing them. Because the thoughts are things, and when we say, I believe and there is no doubt in me, we do two things. We affirm our belief, and by doing so, we build a positive acceptance in mind. And at the same time, we reject our doubts by denying them. Something amazing happens. We practice believing them. There is no doubt. This is what I believe. I practice it and I affirm it and I go over and over again and I reflect upon it until it builds up a strong foundation within my life. And then after you recite them, after you reflect on them, refresh them again. That's right. Make them fresh every day within your life because you may have said, I've enjoyed these wonderful mantras, these truths, I've expressed them, I've read these affirmations, but unless they're fresh each and every day, they sort of fade away and they lose their power. Don't let them get stale. Don't let them spoil. Don't let the life be filled with vain repetitions either, where you're just saying things over and over again just to uh, repeat some sort of mantra or affirmation in a sense of vain expression. But keep it fresh and vibrant that I feel it within. I say this truth and I feel it. I not only know it, but I have evoked the feeling of what this truth means for my life. And it remains fresh in our journey. We are called then to practice them and use them in our daily prayer treatment. This helps us then to be comfortable with this thing we call God realization. The realization of God in us, through us, around us, and ever for us. So when a detour comes, we just express this truth. God's in me. God's working through me. God's all around me. God is working for me. So why do I fear? Why would I be in any way held in lack or separation? Why would I in any way entertain anything that is not my highest and best? Next, I want to encourage you to take a definite stand. How important is this that you begin to say, this I know to be my truth. It's a stance that we take. Make these truths to be your truths by reciting them, by knowing them, by feeling them to be true for you. Not the pastor's truths, some author's truths, some great sage or guru's truths, but we know them to be my truth. This is what I hold dear within my heart. I know them, I feel them to be true. They have to be my true, not someone else's, or these phrases then become just, shall we say, vain repetitions. It is only then that we can make a stance when we claim them and said, this is mine. Mine, my way of thinking, my way of living, my way of believing, my way of feeling and expressing emotion. And what will help us then in taking this stance is to develop this kind of confidence. We, we have the confidence that says, if God is for us, who can be against us? That kind of expression that we say over and over again and we claim to be ours is so powerful when we say, I know this is my truth. God is for me. In every situation, in every circumstances, in every scenario, God is for me, working for me on my behalf. And I want to encourage you, as you're taking a stance, to demonstrate your loyalty to the truth. You know, a lot of people are kind of fickle when it comes to truth. They're in it. They love it. They absorb it. They forget it. They're not that loyal to it. They don't take a stand in it. They don't demonstrate it. They don't uh, let it be a manifesting power at work within their lives. They waver. And I want to encourage you to be loyal to the truth. The truth that says, I am with you, never leaving nor forsaking you, so you're never alone. The truth that says, I am wanting to see you prosper and see you blessed, see goodness unfold at any time and at all times. You know, when we're loyal to that truth, we stick with it, we express it on a day-to-day -day basis. Psalm 16, verse 7 says, I will bless the Lord who guides me even at night, my heart instructs me. I will bless the Lord who's continually guiding me, showing me the way, making the way when there seems to be no way. And even in the darkest times, the night, 
the moments of greatest challenge, I know that the God within instructs me, guides me. When we take these promises to heart and they become ours, our truth, and we're loyal to them, amazing things happen. Today's text, Psalm 19 that you, we read together, verse 55 says, O Lord, I remember your name, meaning I remember your character. I remember everything about you. And in the darkest moments, I keep your law. I hold on to the promises. I hold on to these truths. I am loyal to them. I reflect on them. I recite them. I refresh them. I renew them. All these wonderful energies are at work. What we find is then, as we begin to remember the character of God, all hates, all fear, stress, and worry is gone. Because remembering our, the very character of God, knowing that that character is within us, and that character is our true divine self. Lastly, I want to encourage you to enjoy this key and put this key to work in your life. Get out of your own way. That's right. Get out of your own way. Now more than ever is your time to get out of your own way because success is ours. This is promised over and over again. Do you understand this? Oh, we forget it because we're in the midst of a pandemic. Where is success? And so it's a natural state for us to think, I need to fear, I need to be afraid, I need to worry, I need to be stressed. But success is our default setting. When we start remembering and reflecting on the awesomeness of who we are as this divine creature, this child of God, this heir to all goodness, when we start to reflect on these things, the first thing we need to do is get out of our own way, get the self, the ego, that human carnal mind, get it out of the way and allow the divine to flourish, to flow, to flow in us and through us in our thoughts. We need to understand that everything in our journey has been set up for our greatness. But too often we have too many limiting beliefs. That's why we're in the midst of challenges because we have welcomed limiting beliefs. So I wanna encourage you, don't try to figure out the how, when and where, instead double down on these truths and know them, recite them, take them to heart, let them be, this is my mantra, this is my word for the day. You are God. Your words are your wings. Claim that over and over again, your thoughts become things and you are pushed onto greatness as you begin to say these things over and over again. You don't worry about the how. You don't worry about the where or the when. You just dwell on the goodness and the truth at work within you. Because if you dwell on what's wrong, the problem is you're going to analyze more stuff that's wrong. You're going to be in the thinking of this is what's wrong and what else is wrong and everything else is going wrong. And so it begins to multiply within our minds and our thoughts. So I want to encourage you to begin to understand your greatness. Maybe this is your time to refresh your vision board. That's right. Put together a vision board. of This is what I see unfolding in my life during this pandemic. I have a vision for greatness, for blessing, for prosperity. I have a vision for success. I have a vision for health and wholeness, love and prosperity, all being mine. And I'm going to cut out pictures and create this vision board of what I see and dream for myself. Maybe it's time to renew that and take those baby steps, shall we say, in coming back to the awareness of God in you, through you, around you, and for you. We're so inclined to success that it's actually insane. I have to say this, it's crazy. That's right. You were made for success, created for success. And yet we've created all these roadblocks within our lives based on our, our doubts and our questioning. And we allow that anxiety to rise within us. that just limits how we are created, created for great success. So in the midst of crisis, we might look to Jesus, our way shower and our great teacher and ask, how did Jesus respond? How did he respond in the midst of challenges? And he looked at every opportunity to be a moment to reveal the glory of God. This is my moment, he would say, and I could imagine him embracing. This is my moment. Let me show the glory of God. Let me reveal it to the world for nothing is impossible. Nothing is holding me back. Nothing 
but me, we might say, is holding us back. For our fear and our response to all things and how we respond can be that great barrier. But this is our moment to show the light, to show I am with the light, and by being the light right now in this moment. How did Jesus respond to the crisis of Lazarus' death, his beloved friend who passed away? Having been detained, he comes to the village where family and friends have gathered in mourning. And Jesus arrives and they said, Jesus, if you'd only come sooner, Lazarus is dead. Did he panic? Did he embrace fear? Was he full of negativity? Was there doubt? Not a single feeling or emotion or thought of that type is ever expressed in the story. But instead, Jesus saw this as his moment to allow the glory of God to unfold. How about when Jesus was faced with 5,000 hungry mouths, not counting women and children, meaning there are many more. And disciples say, wouldn't it be best if we just dismissed everybody? Send them out home. Stop with this teaching. Let's just wrap it up, Jesus. It's getting late in the day. Send these people away. How did Jesus respond? He said, instead, let's work with what we have. I see a blessing unfolding. I see an opportunity to be grateful for that which I have, to break it, to bless it, to share and to invite others in this experience. He saw it as an opportunity to express God and the glory of God, even on the cross. Was there panic? On the cross, he expressed great compassion, forgiveness, grace, mercy, not fear, not doubt, but a joyous proclamation. This day you shall join me in paradise. He spoke to those who hung on the crosses around him. He offered words of comfort. He offered words of great peace. This is how we respond when we understand God in us, God through us, God around us, and God always for us. Because what we understand then is that the universe is always saying yes to every scenario within our life. And I want to ask, why is it we start the day with maybe or it can't be? or I don't think it will be. Because it all starts in consciousness, in a thought. When we understand how we respond to today and everything that I'm going through, we understand the keys are there for us. The keys of understanding the truth of God, knowing it deep within, understanding the power and presence in such a way that we're allowing it to unfold in us. And most of all, for us to step aside and to get out of the way. So this is a time of challenge, but I'm offering you these great keys for success in your life that you may feel that sometimes you may have lost those keys and you don't know where to go or where to turn. But remember the divine presence that we call God created you, brought you to this place and will never leave you nor forsake you. And that we're not without a vehicle for success in life, but that the truth has set us free. And just like that opening story of the man who thought he lost his keys, car stolen and he was helpless, I want to remind you that God is ready to pick us up at any time, ready to be there even in our midst of challenge, ready to take us to our highest and best. So let me ask you, how will you respond to what you're going through today? Fear, doubt, negative energies? Or will you respond saying, God in me, God through me, God around me, and God all for me is how I live my day and how I respond. Amen.